Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. And it is that time in the year where we do one of our quarterly reviews. And as per I predicted, we have some more projects this quarter, which is excellent, excellent news. As anticipated, they were going to be in Las Vegas. I have very high hopes for Las Vegas. I think that it's going to be expanded exponentially over the next sort of 5 to 10 to 15 years. So let's have a look and see what is going on, which projects I'm bullish about and which projects I am really quite bearish about. So let's just blow that up. Okay, so let's start off with my, uh, I don't want to use the term favourite, but um, the project that I enjoyed covering the most, which has unfortunately really dropped by the wayside, the Chicago Express Loop. As you know, the mayor changed uh, after this project was essentially given the green light. And since then, very little has happened. In fact, it hasn't been mothballed. And I am fairly confident now that Mayor Lightfoot is never, ever going to approve this. The, uh, the light on the horizon is that potentially, maybe, she might not be around in the next two years. It's possible. But in regards to what I think about that project, I don't think it's going to happen. Nice big project, uh, two 16 a bit mile tunnels. It would have been a really excellent project for the Boeing Company. Um, and I anticipate throughput would have been a lot higher than that as well, but that's the official figures that we were given. Um, probability of completion, uh, I think around 12% at the moment. I think that's being quite, quite reasonable, really. Might probably be less than that. Uh, so that's the Chicago Express Loop. Uh, the most important project that the Boeing Company has ever won is this one, the Las Vegas Convention Center. This is essentially the first project ever that the Boeing Company won between two different parties. It's not doing a project for itself. It's doing it in uh, collaboration with the Las Vegas Convention Center Authority. Project value has increased. I do not know exactly what it is. I am not going to write a number in here until I know exactly how much it has cost but it looks like it's in the region of 52 to 54 million dollars uh, the, the plans changed considerably from when I entered this onto the document so although the project length and the uh, the, the actual uh, layout is very very similar other than the, the they've used more above ground stations Again, good project. Off the back of this project, we're going to win other projects, which I'm going to cover in a, in a short while. Uh, what have I changed since last time? I changed the machine um, back from Godot to Lionstorm. I strongly believe this is the Lionstorm mach machine. I don't think it is the finished Lionstorm machine. I think there has been some incremental improvements on Godot, so I'm going to consider it as a new machine. However, I think there's going to be incremental improvements on this machine in between now and starting the uh, the Win Casino uh, project and Results World project. So I think that uh, maybe I should put Lionstorm version 1 and then use Lionstorm version 2 below here. So uh, I'm anticipating that vehicles could get up to potentially 100 miles per hour on this system. Remember, it's only a short system. Uh, each tunnel is 0 0.827 miles long. I'm anticipating the average speed will be somewhere in the region of 75 miles per hour, probably nearer to 70. Throughput will be 4,400 per hour. It's not three underground stations. It's actually one underground station, two above ground stations. Probability of completion, absolutely 100% is going to get completed. Uh, what do I anticipate? Uh, the finish date will be rather than the actual contracted finish date. I'm expecting it to be finished before the 20th of December. And the keyword is before. So that means it will be ready for CES, Consumer Electronics Show, which hopefully should mean that if I'm able to fly out to Las Vegas, I should be able to go and have a ride on it and have a look at these new projects. So another project that's, that's been forgotten about for quite a while and has come back into the spotlight as it were is the San Jose 
airport loop in California. This bears some very striking similarities to the Ontario airport loop. It looks very similar. The only difference being is that this is linking a main, like a major train station, uh, rather than some kind of uh, intermediate train station. What am I thinking about this project, the San Jose Airport Loop? I like it a lot. Probably consider it my third favourite project out of all the projects that the Boeing Company has proposed. Um, good throughputs, nice long tunnels. Each is just over two miles long, so they should be able to get up to a good fast speed. Good throughputs. I'm hoping that they both use two underground stations. Uh, my probability of completion still, I'd say still is around 21%. We've not heard anything for a long while in regards to that. But I think on the back of the Ontario Airport loop being approved and being started, they may come back to this and then they may approve that in the next two years. That's my theory. Hawthorne Test Tunnel, discussed this many times before. I still am a bit sceptical about that project value, but Elon Musk said it cost 10 million. I suspect it was more like 16, but there you go. Completed using Godot. Um, there's lots and lots of videos now of people going through the tunnel, so that's excellent to see. Um, so that's good, that's good. So that was that, that's that, that's the Hawthorne Test Tunnel. Dugout Loop, Los Angeles, California. So, this is one of the key projects I want to talk about today. There is a lot of talking about this project at the moment. A lot of things going on behind the scenes. A lot of people trying to get approvals, environmental approvals, planning approvals. Uh, a lot of things that are not being mentioned in the media about the dugout loop. It looks like we may hear something more about this in the next six months. Something quite considerable. That is what i'm being told that something's big is going to happen with the dugout loop it's going to get announced it's a great project it serves a really good use case taking people to the uh the, the actual main baseball stadium there in la again i think it will probably use lion storm as the machine but i for some reason i've left godot in there it's a good project. They should be able to get up to very high speeds on that one. They can increase. So the, currently the throughput is down as 1,400 per hour. They're only going to be using one tunnel. I suspect at some point, if this is successful, they may change that to two tunnels. And they'll be able to get that up to around 3,000 to 3,600 per hour. Again, above ground stations. They've opted for above ground stations now. Much more cost effective than underground stations. Not always possible to use above ground stations, but underground stations um, are certainly useful in certain places. Probability of completion, again, I've kept it around here, so 40%. Until I hear more, I'm going to keep it around that figure because I think it's more likely not to happen than to happen. But in the event that something gets announced, I'll increase that up. So again, good news, more good news about the Boeing Company. They continue to push through the various projects that they're looking at. There's a lot going on in the background that a lot of people are not aware of. And that leads to more money potentially for the Boeing Company to make in the long term in terms of both building the projects and also running the projects in terms of furs. So the more projects they build, the more projects they get planning approval for, the more valuable the Boeing company becomes and the more time that Elon Musk is going to dedicate to the Boeing company because until it starts really turning over good money, Elon Musk is always going to consider the Boeing company as a side project away from Tesla, away from SpaceX, away from Neuralink. So I think that is a key project with Dugout Loop in the next sort of uh, 12 to 18 months. Our big success or excuse me, the Boeing Company's big success this uh, quarter is getting essentially into contract negotiations with the Genting Group, who own Resorts World Las Vegas, about building a short tunnel linking Resorts World to the convention center or the new part of the convention center. 
Project value, that is a speculative project value, $9.5 million. I suspect it may well go up quite considerably. Not because costs are going to go out, go out of control, but because I suspect the length of tunnel will increase by possibly another half a mile. Now, why have I put 0 0.42 miles here? Because based on what people are saying, they're saying that it's going to be a 0 0.42 mile tunnel. But when you look at some of the plans, I can see an opportunity for potentially adding more tunnel there and uh, increasing the top speed of the system. So it depends. It re really is just in basic uh, contract negotiations, design negotiations with, with the Genting Group at the moment. A lot of these figures could change dramatically. A lot of this is just guesswork based on previous projects. If things change, they they could the, the, the project value could go down, it could go up. At the moment, this is just you know good ballpark figures at the moment. But potentially, it could end up being closer to a mile, but we'll have to see in the long term. I suspect we'll hear something before December regarding the Results World project. Um, so cost per mile is looking at around 22.6 million, which is very high, but uh, that could also go down considerably. They'll probably use a line storm machine. I suspect uh, the vehicles will get up to 80 miles per hour, but the average speed will be nearer to 55 miles per hour because that route is not very straight at all. Planning approval will be sought once contract negotiations have been agreed. Throughput, 700 per hour. Uh, one station above ground, one station below ground. The below ground station will be in the uh, the area in and around the casino, the Resorts World Casino. They will use the ramps. They will use the Europe method, ultra rapid underpass uh, method for the initial launch tunnel, a uh, launch shaft. Probability of completion, I have around 90% here. I'm very confident about that. All these are to be determined. So here is our other... Uh, project that potentially could take place either after Resorts World or concurrently with Resorts World is the uh, Encore Win Casino. So again, the, these both these projects are, are essentially shuttle surfaces. So it involves a group of vehicles moving along the tunnel. There's only one tunnel. It's not a dual bore system. It's a single tunnel. So you have a group of vehicles, potentially 10 to 15 vehicles. They will all depart within about one to two minutes of each other, go down the tunnel. Passengers will leave the vehicle. There'll be a small waiting period. And then the, the, the whole convoy of vehicles, as it were, will depart down the tunnel. So in that extent, it's not exactly very efficient. I'd much rather they have uh, a dual bore system, but... It's up to the client to build whatever they feel is uh, cost effective for the casinos. So, again, these, these are guesstimates. The project length is very accurate for this particular project. I'm fairly confident it's going to be within 5% of that number. So, $11.5 million total cost. 0 0.59 miles, almost a kilometre cost per mile. As you can see, the cost per mile reduces even though it's almost a similar design to the Resorts World project. But because the tunnel is longer and there are, there are the same number of stations, the cost per mile goes down. So the, 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 the further increase you can uh, establish between stations, if you can make it two miles, three miles, four miles, that will reduce the cost per mile. It will be done by Lionstorm again Vehicle speed is limited to 80 miles per hour. Average speed will be around 55 miles per hour. Planning approval is being sought after contract negotiations have been completed. Throughput 700 per hour. One above ground station, one below ground station. So the actual below ground station will be in the uh, the main entrance area of the Wynn Casino. And uh, vehicles will be able to go, sorry, go in there, park up and be loaded with passengers from the casino. He will then be taken to the Las Vegas Convention Center, sort of every every sort of uh, five five minutes, I presume. Probability of completion again ninety percent. So 
this project here will become the most important project that the boring company will ever, ever, ever undertake. Because this project opens up massive, massive opportunities for the boring company. I cannot stress that enough that this project needs to go absolutely perfectly. Everything needs to be perfect. Quality of the of the actual uh, engineering in terms of de design and construction needs to be near perfection. Uh, cost it needs to be within five percent of the uh, estimated cost, and also the uh, the timeline. It needs to be delivered within the timeline, if not earlier. Because off the back of this, um, off the back of this project. Potentially, there could be three, four, maybe even five tunnels. So it needs to go well. Project value, $70 million. Now, the, they've given a project value of 45 to $75 million. I suspect it'll be at the high end of that. So that's why I've used that figure here. Um, it's going to be a single tunnel. I think, we think it's going to be a single tunnel. Based on what I'm seeing here. But again, I could be wrong. Uh, based on what people are saying, it's, it's a single tunnel. But as you know, designs change. So it's 2.83 miles long. Cost per mile is quite excessive, 24,730. But again, this, this number here could change. If that number was 60 million, then potentially that's gonna be dropped down considerably. Uh, it'll be Linestorm version two on this project, potentially proof rock, potentially that could change next quarter. I'll have to wait and see. Because it's got such a long length of tunnel, the top speed and the average speed are gonna be very high, 155 to 125 miles per hour. Uh, planning approval is actually being sought for that now. So they're looking to get that through. Um, they're in negotiations with uh, Ontario Airport uh, Authority. And once they've confirmed that the system can do what they say it can do, which obviously it can do, they've basically fired off all the other proposals, uh, the, the heavy rail proposals, as it were. And the reason for all that is because the Boeing company can undercut all those proposals by at least 85%, if not more. So there's, there's no reason why they're going to go back and say, hey, let's have a look at this other alternative that costs you know, five, six times as much as the Boeing company. They're not going to do that because they don't gain anything from that. They gain from building this system, running it for six months, and then building another tunnel, running it for six months, and then building another tunnel. That is how they spend the money they have wisely on this project. They don't throw the money away at, some, at one scheme. If they give the money in chunks to various different tunnels that are going to link the airport to northwest northeast southwest you know southeast it, that, that that's how this project balloons into something that is going to make uh, both the boeing company and the ontario airport authority a ton of money so uh the planning approval is going to be sought once the contract negotiations have been completed and they will be completed um, before uh, the end of January of next year. Uh, throughput per hour is, again, it's a bit confusing how it's been um, documented for this particular scheme. We've got 1,500 per hour here. I suspect it might be a lot higher than that in the event that they do go for two, a dual tunnel system. Potentially, they could, that could be 3,000, 4,000. But... I don't anticipate that they need a throughput of more than 1500 per hour. They don't need that throughput because you're not gonna get tons and tons of people using this system. So I think 1500 per hour and using a single tunnel might initially be a very good idea. Both stations will be underground. Uh, it's linking a local metro station, so I'm presuming that they'll have an underground station adjacent to that metro station. It's quite a densely packed area, so I'm guessing that they've got no other option but to go underground. Uh, and also at the airport, you'd anticipate that they, they may want to use the land above it for car parks or other buildings. 
so it'll probably be underground. Probability of completion is around 75%. There's still a lot of negotiating to be done, but uh, I anticipate that they'll get through that in the next uh, quarter, and then negotiations can uh, uh, move on to the planning stage. So that's good. Let's look at some other projects. So Baltimore, Washington, DC loop. That's going through its environmental uh, assessment. Another big project, really high top speed on this one. The cost per mile and cost per kilometer are very low because essentially there's only uh, two stations, one at either end. Although they probably should add uh, intermediate stations. I think that would make economic sense and it would make the, the system a, a lot more usable. Um, but currently at the moment, the cost per mile is looking very favorable. Uh, throughput 6,000 per hour. It's very possible with a system of that length and you're able to keep the top speeds very high, two underground stations. Uh, again, probability completion 75% for that one. So that's another, I'd say that's probably my second favorite project on here, the Baltimore Washington DC loop. Though that could be under uh, undercut or overtaken, sorry, by other projects. Um, Another project that people have asked me to do, uh, one of my Patreons and a couple of people on Discord, is the Fremont Supply Tunnel in California. So that would be linking um, the seat manufacturing facility that Tesla owns to the main Fremont uh, factory. As the issue they have at the moment is getting the seats from that factory uh, to their main um, car manufacturing facility. So. It, it certainly would make sense economically. Uh, project value, uh, 20 million, just over 20 million. So that's, it's probably close to 21 million. Project length, 2.18 miles. Um, so that's two tunnels uh, of 1.09 miles. You'd have a conveyor belt moving in between the two. Uh, in fact, you'd have two conveyor belts feeding it. So that's the better way of doing it, is having two going in uh, the same direction. From what I remember, and uh, cost per mile would be excellent because you don't really need any of the expensive uh, kind of stations that you would need for a transport scheme because this is more of a, a supply tunnel rather than a, a, a transport tunnel. I've put proof rock down again. This is just a theoretical project, by the way. Um, people, he, it has been mentioned before, but it, it's very, very unlikely that. Uh, anything's going to be done about this in the next uh, year or so but it's interesting to talk about it so i've got here 7000 uh, seats per hour so that could be operating you know 18 to 19 hours per day so you, you could have a nice supply of seats waiting for the uh, uh, the facility in the morning if if necessary um they're not really underground stations they they kind of um as it were like it's like a conveyor belt and then it would come up um should really clarify that. Um, okay, so probability completion, I've got around 55%. It, it's probably lower than that, but it's an interesting project and I'd like to see Elon Musk talk about it more. It, it's a good, a, a good use case for the boring company other than uh, transport. So these are other projects that are very, very unlikely to happen that have been proposed. This one in particular, the Blue Mountain Crossing in Sydney is an absolute joke. It was just proposed uh, by some politician in Australia and he was just looking to get you know his, uh, his name out on Twitter and he tweeted Elon Musk and asked him if he would do this project and he gave a price and it was never, there was never ever any funding there. There was never any serious planning or consideration for how difficult this would be to complete. And uh, yeah, so I've got the probability completion as 0.001%. And the same goes for another politician uh, approved uh, or proposed project, the Israel Loop by Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, they didn't even tell us where it was going, how many tunnels it would be, how deep it would be, how much it would cost. It was just like, hey, we're going to build a tunnel, and that was it. So, I mean, that's just, it. again, it's a joke. I'm probably going to end up removing this project um, in the next year or so because it's not really worth my time talking about it. Again, the probability of completion is 0.001%. Another project that has a better chance of being completed but is 
increasingly looking unlikely due to the cost of it's not just the cost of the tunnel but the cost of the actual um, equipment needed to make the uh, the CERN particle accelerator viable is looking at billions billions and billions of euros to build this um, science project as it were and as interesting as I think the CERN particle accelerator is and I did study physics at A level so I do find these kind of things reasonably interesting it, it, it's just so costly so extreme so big I don't even think the main project is going to get approval never mind just the tunnels that the Boeing company would need to construct so it'd be a big circular tunnel uh, exactly 100 kilometers in diameter no stations, no uh, no ramps. It's just basically very um, very cool science project where their their colliding particles are insane speeds. Like they already have a particle accelerator, uh, but it's about uh, six times smaller than this one. So if they were to build this, the the amount of um, uh, energy that would result from those collisions would be astronomical. But what what is the reason for spending you know 15 million euros on a project like this? I, I just don't think that uh, the various people that fund this are going to be able to convince people right now in potentially what is going to be a recession that it is viable to spend you know 15 million euros on a particle accelerator. So again, conceptual. Uh, I give it a bit more. I give it 10. I, th I think 10 is a bit. I I'll be honest with you. I think it's probably more like 7%. I'm going to change that so there you go those are all the projects a lot of things are going on this list will probably stay the same the next time we do our quarterly review but then, and then again who knows maybe something might sneak on here maybe something might fall off who knows but all in all great to see um, all the fantastic news in regards to the boring company and a lot of good things are happening especially in las vegas and the concentration of time and effort should be in las vegas and also in uh, in california those are the two main areas where we've got lots of potential projects and that's where steve davis and elon musk should uh, allocate the time okay guys thank you very much for joining this video and watching if you've made it all the way to the end Wow, full credit to you because I've been talking for a long time, 28 and a half minutes now. But uh, thank you so much for everyone who supports this channel. Thank you to the Patreons. Please like and subscribe to the video. Join us on Discord uh, and Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much. And remember, guys, don't be bored.